Hey, happy Friday! You made it! So I hope that you noticed that um, the engineering um, uh, activities that we did helped to extend the lessons for the week, and really I'm asking for very little of you. So make sure you've posted your mission patch because that is crucial for your credit for this week. Also make sure you continue working on code.org. Right now I'm um, gauging your work on code.org as participation. But at the end of the marking period, I am going to go in each person's code.org file and see how much work you've done. So you need to be collecting the course load by getting those green um, activities checked off and completed. So some people are working way ahead, that's fine. But if you know that you've worked for 15, 20 minutes each time I ask for code.org, you need to make sure that that is what you are working to complete. Today, uh, it's a fun Friday, so I'd like you to have your time to go back and complete any work you have not done, watch any of my videos, and then spend some time on Scratch. So with Scratch, I've showed you before that you have two main tabs. You have the Create tab and the Explore tab. Today, I'd like to explore Pong. So Pong is an easy game that we can work to create in Scratch. And the way that Pong works is that you have a paddle and you have a ball that moves. And as the ball moves, the paddle bounces it back. So I'm going to click on Explore and play some games. If you see a tutorial that you like, like a chase game, you could do a chase game. You can do many different types. With this type, it's a bounce game. That was a very basic game when I was a kid. So the way that Asteroids works is you're a little plane, uh, plane that works in the middle, and you have to um, take all the asteroids and reduce them to dust. So I'm going to play easy. <laughs> I really really like that game if I'm thinking about like other easy or games from long ago I could type in other things like you know Tetris was an old game But the reason I want you to explore a bit with the games is because there's some easy formats that you can either go click the remix And when you click the remix you're kind of taking this project and you can turn it into your own. So you can make it just a little bit different. All right, enough of the fun and games. What you'll notice here is I'm inside of Asteroids Remix. If you want to remix something. And then now that we're inside of the remix button, you're going to see for such a high level of uh, game here, you have all of these different sprites that all have code to them. So here you're going to see that the border has its own code because the border bounces things off. And then you can click through and watch. All right, so here's the player ship. So you see here that it has thrust so you can um, fly the, um, the, the plane or the ship. You also have ways of seeing how the, uh, um, let's call it a spaceship. The spaceship, if you press the left arrow, do you see it turns five degrees? Same with the up arrow. So it's set all its directions. Now, this is really complicated code. So that's why I say if you want to click the remix and see all that people are doing, this might be helpful to you. But... If that is way too advanced, my hope for us today in exploring code, which would be playing games, and then coming to create, you should click on tutorial. And then inside of tutorials, 
One of our previous lessons was animating our name, but look at the games we can make. We can make a chase game. We could animate a character. We could make a clicker game. We could make a fly game. Or we can make a pong game. So I'm going to click the tutorial to make a pong game and see how we do with this. So I've clicked into the Pong tutorial. Hopefully you're able to see my code a little bit easier than the last video that I had made. Make sure the first thing you do is go up and title it, Joseph Pong Game, but you need to title your work. And then I'm going to let the video teach me and I'm gonna stop it as I go, all right? So hopefully my volume is high enough for you. It's hard to have the volume really high on these videos because I don't have an external microphone. That's what some of you are noticing in some of the videos. So I'm really trying to get my audio points better for you. So hopefully this is a little easier for you to hear today. You can use Scratch to make a Pong game. Bounce a ball or something else and score points to win. First, let's pick a backdrop. So. If you've used uh, Scratch before and you feel confident, you could probably pick different backdrops, but I think that the best thing to do is to do exactly what the tutorial does, and then you can make changes later. So I'm gonna go to backdrops, and I'm gonna search, and her backdrop was this one, same as that one, and I'm gonna get rid of that cat. I'll pick this one. Let's choose an object to bounce around. I'll pick this ball. So. You could pick the ball, or you could pick something else. I could put, uh, sorry, what am I searching for? Ball. Oh, I'm in backdrop. See, I'm learning myself. Now ball, I could do balloon, I could do this, I could do that, I could do button. Yeah, let's have that, it'll look like a disc, all right? Now, if I want that to be a little smaller, I can go to size. There we go. We can make the ball move with this block. So the block that we're looking at is inside motion and it's move 10 steps. So I can try that like her. Good. Let's see what happens if we put it in a loop. All right, so a loop is under control. And a loop, like we've learned from code.org, makes things go on for a certain amount of time, like four or five or six, or it can go on forever. So you want to get the move forever loop. Nice. Now, it seems to be stuck on the edge. Let's try adding this block. If on edge, bounce. All right, so if I play the green flag, oh, sorry, no green flag yet. So if I play this, do you see that the sprite gets stuck on the edge. And this happens a lot in Scratch unless you code it. So she's saying that inside of motions, there is a if on edge. So you want to grab that and add it into your code. Inside the loop. Okay, great. It's moving back and forth. Let's see if we can make it bounce at an angle. I'll make... So... To make it bounce at an angle, she chose point in direction, okay? So I'm gonna go to point in direction. She put it above her code. And then when you click on the 90, you can tell it to change anything. And I'm gonna do 45 just like her. Make it point at an angle and start the code by clicking the green flag. So if you don't have a start event, this will never happen when somebody clicks the green flag. But if you want them to click the green flag, you can add it into the start of your code and then it will work. Now let's add another sprite that the player can use to hit the ball. I'll pick the paddle. I'll drag the paddle to the bottom and I want the player to be able to move the paddle side to side. But All right, so here's where it gets a little bit tricky, right? All right, so if I want a paddle, I need to go down here and search paddle. And now I have my paddle and I can put it 
on the bottom. Now what she's saying is I need to program it in a way that this sprite interacts with this sprite and bounces it off. So let's watch and I'm going to go back just a little bit. To move the paddle side to side by moving the mouse. So I'll make the paddle go across the stage when the mouse moves. Oh wow. Alright, so now I'm going to go to motion and what she's chosen is set x2. You see this? Set x2. So she's taken that out. But then there's ways that we can add things into it. So inside of sensing in the light blue, you're going to grab mouse x and it should slide right in. So it should say set x2 mouse x. and then do that forever. So I love these tutorials because they're guiding you along in simple phrasing and coding about what needs to happen. So let me try. And it doesn't, oh, now it's working. But I'm not getting it bouncing off, so. And I'll add a green flag on top. Click the green arrow to find out how to hit the ball with the paddle, add a score, and more. So guys, I clicked the arrow, and when you click the arrow, you'll start to see the work that we did. See, we did the move the paddle. Then you can select the ball sprite. So I've had that done, and I already did that. Now, since I selected the ball, what I've been working on without you, before you, was copying this code all right so it was great that i copied it i made a different change i'm not having the um, ball move 15 steps but i have checked my work and when i do this i can bounce the ball and i'm very happy that that's working so well so now that the ball is bouncing i can add a score all right well in order to add a score I need to go to the variables and I need to make a score by typing in score for new variable name. And if this is hard for you, you can stop my video and go back or just watch the tutorial. So now that I made the setup for score, I need to choose score from the menu. See here? And now I need to add change score by one to the ball code. All right, so here's my code here. And it says change score by, okay, change score by one when it touches the edge. All right. Let's click by one more time just to make sure. When clicked set score to zero, oh, that is very important because you don't want the next person to have somebody else's points. So that I go back to my variables, set score to zero at the beginning. All right. And now my score is going up. So, this is the basics of the Pong game. If you want to do more, you could watch other Pong games, like maybe you want to add another player for player two players. But, notice that when I click the green flag, the score resets. So, I love that I've made a Pong game in about 10 minutes. You can do that with these tutorials. If you don't like the Pong game, do a different one but use the tutorial to help you with the teaching. It is very similar to how I would have been helping you, and this is a great way to practice, except if you're um, having a hard time, you could go back to code.org because code.org will guide you through as well. Thank you, friends. Remember, spend about 15 or 20 minutes playing some games and then working to create some code. Once you've done some creating of your code, I want you to make sure you click share, make sure you title it, click share, 
And then inside of share, you're going to see instructions. So move the mouse and get the high score. I should probably tell them, click the green flag to get started. Okay, so I gave them my directions. Now, since I have already shared this project, now I can copy the link to share with the whole class. So inside of here, I can copy the link or I can even embed the code in. So watch this. So I'm gonna go down to the green folder for Friday. And now that I'm here on Friday, you're gonna view your friend's mission patches and load Scratch and work on a tutorial. So I created a Pong game. So I can post the link, Mr. Joseph Pong game. But watch this. Okay, stay with me. Stay with me. I can embed the actual game for people to be able to see. An embed code is really cool because watch what it looks like. It'll look different. This is my Pong game. So now I can embed the code. See the word embed here? Mr. J Pong game. So now when I post this, people are actually going to see the image of the scratch game when they click buy and they're going to want to click on that. So I'd like you to, again, go look at your friend's mission patches. If you haven't done that, go do that as participation grade. Make sure you load scratch and work on a tutorial and play some scratch games. Thank you, friends, for working so hard this week. I hope you enjoyed yourselves.